When you're animating in Godot 4, there are a bunch of new animation tools that have been added to make the entire process a lot easier. The animation player has always been a delightful tool for building pre-built simple animations. But if you want your animations to be dynamic or update in real time, say you want to animate from a start point to an end state that you don't know about until the code's running, you'll want to use a tween. So the tweens have had a total overhaul in Godot 4. Previously, you'd have to add a tween node to your scenes. Then when you did that, you would give it the node you want to animate, the property you want to animate, the value you want it to start at, the value you want it to finish at, how long you want it to animate for, and then optionally, you can include easings and transition types to control the pace of your animation. Well, that's all been reworked. Now, if you want to create a tween, there is a create tween method on every object in your scene. You can also get the tree and create a tween globally. If you create a tween on a node, it binds it to it, so it will respect a bunch of its settings, and when the node itself gets deleted, the tween will also clean up. So now what you do, instead of giving it all of that information I was talking about previously, what you'll do is you will tell it the node you want to animate on, the property you want to animate, what you want it to go to, and how long you want that to take. This is a much shorter process overall, and it makes general quick animations much, much easier to perform in Godot 4. When you use the tween property method in this way, what it will do is it will return a property tween a node. This has a bunch of methods that you can call on it to add extra functionality on top of what we've already got. So for example, say like before you want to control the value it starts animating from, rather than whatever that value currently is, you can use the dot from method on the end of that tweener property call. Now when you run the tween in this way, it will start from the value you provided and animate to the target you gave it. If you want to queue a series of animations, that all happens implicitly. Every time you call the tween property function, it adds that tweening process onto the end of a queue. So say I want to tween my object so it moves to the right, I can then tween the object so it moves up, and then tween it so it goes back to the starting point, and those will happen one after the other. This might not be desirable though. You might be in a spot where you want to tween two properties at once, and then afterwards return to having a series of animations. On the tween itself, there is the parallel function. If you pass this true, it will make it so that all the following animations will happen in parallel. So you can tween the position and the size at the same time. And then when you're done with that, there are a couple of ways you can go back to acting procedurally. You can either turn parallel off after you're done, or you can use the dot chain method to chain something after the current set of parallel functions. So how do we get those easings and transition types we talked about earlier? Most animations look really unnatural if you leave them linear, because you have very few constant rate of change motions in the natural world. Everything tends to have momentum. So you're going to want to add these easings and transition types. There are two ways that you can add that. You can either add the easing and transition type to the tween itself. If you do that, all of the following animations will use that easing type until you change it. Or, in the same way you use dot from on the tween property function, you can set an easing or a transition type on an animation by animation basis. And even still, we're only scratching the surface of the number of things you can do. Everything that you add gets put in this queue of things that are going to happen, and you can add a lot of extra behaviour in there. Say you want to wait a certain amount of time, there is a delay function you can call that will make it wait a certain amount of time when it gets to that point in the queue of animations. You can also set a callback, then it will call a function you've declared yourself. This ties really neatly into some really powerful stuff that Godot 4 has added to callables themselves, functions being treated as variables. Because of this, you can bind arguments to these functions that you call. So one thing I often do is I might want to emit a signal at a specific point when I'm tweening. Say I have a health bar, and I tween the health bar until it goes down to zero. I might want to emit a signal at the end saying, oh, if we've got down to zero health, our character is dead. So in that case, what we can do is we can tween callback the emit signal function that's attached to our node itself, 
and then we can bind the name of the signal we want to emit. And there are tons of other things you can bind in this way. It's all very powerful and ties together very neatly. So I'm just going to go over a few stock examples for you of really cool stuff you can do with tweens. Let's stick on that health bar example. Let's say I want the experience bar to tween to a specific value, and if it's full, I want to tween all the way up to the top and then reset to zero and start tweening again. I can put my events into a queue and I can call functions to check the state of things as well. Say I want to conditionally change the animation I call, say I have an attack animation and I might want to do some setup animations. Well, what I can do in that case is I can pass the tween itself that I'm using to a function and let that inject extra objects, well, extra function calls into the queue and run those as well. Tweens are stupidly powerful. The whole PR that improved the system was tremendous. It's made using them much faster to use and a tighter experience overall, and it really is yet another great improvement for Godot 4. If you want to learn more about Godot 4, I have a course called Godot for Beginners. This covers giving you access to source code and guides that will teach you how to use Godot 4. The source code itself has a whole bunch of demos, the most recent of which being a small example of how to use tweens for a Pokemon style battling thing. In that it uses tweens for animations, for transitions, a whole host of stuff. So yeah, buy into the course if you want source code and jazz like that. Tweens are really powerful. Let me know if there's anything else you want to find out about in Godot 4, especially on the animation side. The thing I want to look at next is compute shaders. They look really cool. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.